Ladies and gentlemen, young people of Holyrood, a very warm welcome to the Holyrood Secondary Annual Senior Phase Award Ceremony. I am Miriam. And my name is Sam. We will be your hosts for the award ceremony. The ceremony will get underway shortly, but before we proceed, we would like to take you through some basic housekeeping matters. In the event of a fire alarm, we will exit the auditory through that door or that door and take the back door at the right turn. We will then exit through the doors at the bottom of the corridor, turning right as we leave the building. We will assemble on the tarmac beside the astro pitch. Can I ask that you ensure all mobile phones are off or are put in silent mode to prevent disturbance during the awards? Can I ask also that you please wear your face masks throughout the ceremony? As you arrived this afternoon, you were entertained by the excellent Dermot McGregor on acoustic guitar playing Sandy Carelios. Please join me in showing our appreciation. I would now like to invite Hannah Irving to lead us in an opening prayer. Dear God, today we join with heaven as we celebrate and give thanks for every young person here. Thank you that each one is unique and full of potential. Thank you for leading them in their learning, for keeping them safe as they studied and for watching over them every day of their lives. We pray that they may all feel proud this day and enjoy sharing their achievements with family and friends. May today be a memory that burns bright within them as they continue on life's great adventure. Amen. Thank you, Hannah. I would now like to invite our head teacher, Mrs. Watson, to say a few words. Good afternoon. Let me start by extending my welcome to all of you to our award ceremony of 2021, or in lots of cases, welcoming you back today. You'll be pleased to know that I won't be repeating my entire speech from earlier, but please indulge me as I repeat some of the main sentiments. Welcome back to John Scott QC, who will speak to you very shortly. When listening to John, please remember that he is a former pupil of Holyrood, and you are the people that will be in this position in the future. And by that, I don't just mean a former pupil of Holyrood, I mean I'll be looking to get you back here as guest speakers too. Welcome again to Donnie McLeod, Head of Service for Education in Glasgow, and as I will keep on telling you, my boss. I would ask you to be on your best behaviour, but I know you will anyway. This is the award ceremony where we recognise the special awards. Awards given because of the great talent, great leadership, great passion, or in some cases, such dedication that there has not been a day missed in 13 years. To you, our award winners, be proud of these awards. Today should be a moment you remember for a long time to come a moment in history. I remind you, as if I have to, that we are still living in a global pandemic, and I think that makes this achievement even greater. If I could award everyone from the class of 2020, 2021, 2022 and 2023 awards for great resilience and bounce back ability, if that's even a word, I would, but also for great courage and for solidarity. More than ever this last two years, I've witnessed the care, compassion and support you've given to each other and to our staff. Thank you for that. I've spoken already about the school success and while that makes me proud, what makes me even prouder is the individual stories. That's what this ceremony is about. That's why you're here. For those of you here today for the first time, Please take a moment to think about all those who made this possible. Your family, your teachers, your peers, and please don't forget your faith. When you think about this achievement, share the credit and say thank you in your own way. And as I said to those of you here earlier, you don't need to wait like Adele did. You can say thank you now. Earlier on, I reminded you about success coming from happiness and not the other way around. I'd like to share with you now some words from St John Henry Newman, the patron saint, interestingly, of my own high school, and a man whose writings often provide great inspiration and wisdom. God has created all things for good, all things for their greatest good, everything for its own good. What is the good of one is not the good of another. 
What makes one man happy would make another unhappy. God has determined, unless I interfere with his plan, that I should reach that which will be my greatest happiness. He looks on me individually. He calls me by my name. He knows what I can do, what I can best be. What is my great happiness? And he means to give it to me. Your success is already great, but let it continue to be not just that success, but the good you do that matters. Have a lovely afternoon. Thank you, Mrs. Watson. We are honoured to have John Scott QC as our guest speaker today. John was a court lawyer for over 30 years. He has been a QC since 2011. At the 2018 Law Awards of Scotland, John is recognised jointly as Silk of the Year, a very prestigious honour. In 2016, John was elected President of the Society of Solicitor Advocates, having been a Vice President since 2008. John has achieved great success in his career. He has chaired many independent reviews for the Scottish Government and perhaps, most significantly, John was a pupil right here at Holyrood Secondary School from 1976 to 1981. Ladies and gentlemen, young people of Holyrood, please welcome our guest speaker, Mr John Scott QC. Thanks very much, Simon, Miriam. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to compete with the pigeon um, that was laid on specially for you today. Um, I, I'm very pleased to be asked here today to, to help celebrate your achievements um, and uh, all your endeavours. You've all done things which are important, special uh, and impressive. It has, as has been said, been all the more impressive for you to have done that during the pandemic uh, and when you've had to do so much online, including engaging with your colleagues and your teachers. So well done for that. Um, so who am I? Why have I been asked uh, here? I'm John Scott and I'm a, a Holyrood old boy. Um, I lived in Curtis Avenue just nearby, just off Aikenhead Road, and was here between 1976 and 1981. Before I came, my only connection to Holyrood was that my aunt had been a French teacher here. After I came, my three younger brothers uh, all attended as well. Our head teacher for the bulk of my school career was Mr Mullen, um, a much more strict disciplinarian than his predecessor, Mr Poley, and things have moved on quite a bit since then, and I'm very grateful uh, for the tour that I had earlier on uh, to see some parts of the school that I recognised and other bits that, that didn't exist when I was here. Um, when I was at school, I, I wasn't very good at sport. You could search all of the, the school records on sport, sporting activities and achievements and you wouldn't find my name mentioned uh, anywhere. Um, but I was interested in debating and public speaking and encouraged in that in particular by some of my English uh, teachers. I also appeared in the school pantomime, um, which was uh, uh, until recently a claim to fame that I'd forgotten, but my younger brother reminded me and also reminded me of one of the jokes that has stayed with him, which I'm not going to repeat because he remembered it because it wasn't funny rather than because it was. Um, when I was doing some of the public speaking for Holyrood, I took part in the English Speaking Union competition that was shown on the television programme called Unaccustomed As I Am, which fortunately you can't find on YouTube or anywhere. I think it predated every means of uh, social media. Um, we got through, I was the junior member of the team, we got through to the final of the competition, which was also shown on the television, uh, and the first prize was a, an all expenses trip to America, and we came second, uh, for which the prize was a £100 gift certificate for your school library. Um, so you can just imagine our um, disappointment. Um, I, I also managed, along with a, another uh, colleague, a girl in the year below me, to get to the final of the Daily Express debating competition, which was a really prestigious debating competition at the time. The final was heard, held in the Glasgow University Union, um, and I gave, I think, the worst performance of my life. Uh, my mum was in the audience, which made it worse, uh, because she told me afterwards how good I was, and I, I knew that I, I really wasn't. Um, 
When I was at Holyrood, I managed to get some work experience through one of the teachers here who was involved in, in careers guidance. He was friendly with a, a lawyer in a firm in East Kilbride, so I got a, a week there doing mostly court work and following one of the court lawyers around. Um, I have to confess that contrary to my expectations, when I qualified as a, a solicitor about where I would be at the age of nearly 60, um, despite being a QC, I don't know everything, and I thought I would. I was pretty sure that by the time you get, I mean, I would have thought maybe even by the time I was in my 50s, I would know everything. Uh, but actually, I don't, and I'm not frightened to admit that. I wouldn't necessarily lead in conversations about the things that you don't know, but don't be frightened of saying it when, when it's true. Um, and when it happens, and it does happen to us all, share that with colleagues. And the more experienced colleagues you may well find, as I have, uh, will be happy to share their experience and what they've learned, the do's and don'ts, the, even sharing the mistakes that they've made from what you can learn uh, as well. And then in turn, when you're experienced and someone comes to you and says, I'm afraid I don't really know what I'm doing here, you can help them in the same way that you've been helped in the same way that I've been helped by others. Um, when I did my traineeship in a firm in Glasgow, I, I got the chance to learn from many different sorts of practitioners, different sorts of law, and I learned the things that I wasn't interested in, and I learned the things that I wasn't very good at. Um, but I also learned that being a court lawyer um, was almost as exciting um, and interesting as I had hoped when my dad first told me that it was my ambition to become a lawyer. Um, my three younger brothers worked out that they actually had a say in it as well. So hopefully you, you've worked out that for yourselves too. Uh, it, it took me, I didn't ever work that out. But fortunately the law is a, a very wide area and it, it was easy enough for me to find something that I enjoyed doing. Um, Holyrood is a connection in my career as well. My first interview for my first job after I trained was in a pub in Queen Street in Glasgow on Cup final day in 1988. Um, I, I thought it was some sort of psychometric testing, but it turned out it wasn't. It was just that the person who was interviewing me, Brangle Fedder, who was another former pupil of Holyrood, I never thought that the old Holyrood school tie was going to come into uh, play to assist me. It's not like Eton, but the old Holyrood school tie, not only did that help, the fact that we were both going to the game helped. And when Frank McAvenny scored the winner, very close to full time, I was pretty sure I would get the job, which I did. Um, when I started through in Edinburgh, then I did my first sheriff and jury trial in 1989. Um, and I've been lucky enough to do lots of jury trials since then. Since about September or October of last year, jury trials um, involve the jury being on a big screen and you see the 15 faces and they're in a cinema. Um, I think they're in Bray Head for Glasgow Sheriff Court and Glasgow High Court. Um, and in the cinema, we're on the big screen uh, for them. But it does seem to work, and it's just one of these things that we've all had to adapt to in the way that you adapted to learning uh, online or in a blended way. I have to confess that the, the films and the TV programmes you see about lawyers, which I love, I, I watch um, many of those, don't capture the full monotony of bits of my career. The countless hours, days, weeks, years that I spent waiting for cases to happen or filling in legal aid forms is a big part of it that you never see for obvious reasons in the, in the media portrayals. I, I completed so many legal aid forms for one then young man that I know his date of birth as well as I know the date of birth of my own two children, 29,675. Um, it, it just it, it stayed with me. I must have completed hundreds of legal aid forms. So that's an element of bureaucracy, which you don't really hear about, but is part of, I think, not only the job of a criminal defence lawyer, but lots of jobs. But it's a great job. It takes you right into the heart of people's lives. And it's very often people who have something terrible has happened or they have done something terrible but they're not in a position to put forward the best case on their own behalf. And so you can come in, and it's very often it's explaining why they did something, but sometimes it's also people who have been wrongly accused 
and there are people who have been able to help over the years who, if they'd been convicted, would have lost careers or may have gone to prison for a long time. Um, I, I mentioned careers uh, advice earlier on. Um, one of my claims to fame, which I don't mention on my website or in the introduction you heard there, is that I have the distinction of having represented the worst shoplifter in Scottish legal history. Um, the careers advice he got at whatever school it was he went to in Leith was obviously pretty poor uh, because I'm convinced that he was caught every single time he went shoplifting. Um, his dad had been a drugs baron in the 60s and 70s and had spent about 20 years in jail. The son was going to spend the same amount of time in jail but made up of three six-month sentences uh, all for shoplifting. Um, but he didn't learn anything about through the courts and just never picked up from the, the opportunity for learning that was presented to him. Um, on one occasion he was shoplifting in, in Boots the Chemist near our office at the foot of Leith Walk in Edinburgh. Ran out, was chased by the shop staff. Leith Police Station is very nearby. Two police officers picked up the chase. He ran into our office, at which point he started laughing and flicking the Vs at the police officers. Um, everyone was a bit puzzled about his quiet, or not quiet, his celebration, uh, given that he'd just been caught. And he then said, you can't lift me, I'm in my lawyer's office. It, and at that point, the police officers started laughing and he looked puzzled because we tried to work out what had got into his head. And we think that he'd seen the cartoon version, the Disney cartoon version of The Hunchback of Notre Dame and had mistaken the old law of sanctuary in medieval churches uh, for being able to go into your lawyer's office and not get, getting arrested by the police. And uh, that's not a thing. Um, so as he was being huckled by the police, he was shouting at us for being useless and not appreciating that sanctuary still applied. Um, I, as my career moved on, I, I didn't want to just be one of those lawyers, and there are some who sit talking about all the, their glory days and, and doing the same thing over and over again. There are some that do that, and they're very good at it, but I, I wanted to try other things, so I then did the qualifications that were needed to be able to appear in the High Court. So I can do all the things that you see the barristers and the advocates doing where they're wearing the wig, but I just don't have to wear a, a wig, which is, a, a, I think, an improvement. Um, so. It is important when you're doing whatever it is you choose to do to, to find ways to push yourself on, um, to see if there's things that will make it more interesting for you, that will improve your skills, that will add to your experience, that might help when you're applying for other jobs or applying for university or, or college places, or even just for the satisfaction of doing something else that you enjoy that makes your life more uh, pleasurable. So aspire, do try and push yourself on. Um, when I got the rights of audience, I then got my head back down again, realizing that getting the experience and doing the cases was, the, was the, the way of doing it. There's no shortcut to getting lots of experience. But 10 years on, I then managed to, to find a case where I thought I could do it, and it was going to the UK Supreme Court. So that is, I described earlier on, as the Champions League for criminal defence lawyers. And very, very few lawyers go there. Um, so going there for your first time is, is extremely daunting. These are some of the cleverest people in the, the whole of the country. But I enjoyed the experience. I had to work very hard for it, enjoyed it. It seemed to go OK. I managed to get back to the Supreme Court just a few months later, the same year. And then I went for the third time in 2013 in between the birth of my two kids, who are not twins, but are as close in age as you could be to being twins. One was born in February, and one was born in December of 2013. So my third appearance in the Supreme Court also taught me how it's possible to function with very, very little sleep uh, and still do a reasonable job. Um, that Supreme Court appearance was, imp was important for me as well in terms of honest self-assessment. So aspiring, but also recognising that you need to put in the time to get the experience, to put yourself in the position to actually do it. And there were other lawyers that were down at the same time as me, one very experienced and one very inexperienced, and they both crashed and burned. So uh, being, in the one case, I think maybe a lack of preparation, and in the other case, because he'd, he'd pushed himself too far too soon and, and wasn't ready for it. So 
believe in yourself, aspire, push yourself as far as you can, but make sure you've got the backing of sufficient experience that you, you know what it is you're doing. And you've got that to fall back on in those moments where you're being tested, challenged, or asked really difficult questions. And the last bit of my career I, I wanted to mention, it's something that lay just to the side of my day job, which was being involved in the voluntary sector, so the, the third sector, for um, the, the Scottish Human Rights uh, Centre. Uh, one of my former colleagues had been involved in that, thought I would be interested, and invited me along to the AGM, which was in Holland Street in the city centre. Uh, so I went along, quite a small meeting, and I was asked, uh, I think I asked if I could help, and I was then given the, the task of diluting the orange. Um, now, either their committee was woefully short of people, or I'm the best person that had ever um, diluted the orange at one of their AGMs because I got onto the committee and then after a few years became the, the, the convener of that organisation. But it was good because it was to do with civil liberties, human rights, and these were all very often in relation to either people who were in prison or people going through the criminal justice system. So it's, it sat as a really nice complement to my day job. My day job informed that and that, I think, improved me as a, a lawyer. It also led to me appearing on daytime television. Um, he, he, I, I'm certainly not still around now, but uh, Kilroy was one of the, the sort of top uh, daytime programmes in the morning. I was on that. I was on a Richard and Judy special on youth crime. I see that Richard's in the, the jungle in Wales, but he's just taken ill today, so I'm not going to say anything more about him. Um, but I, I, I got flown down to London for that, and I was thinking, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty special, and it's been finally recognised. Uh, and I sat in the audience wearing a bright orange shirt just so that people could see me. And not only could you not see me on the programme that was broadcast, but I, I wasn't asked any questions or asked to contribute at all. So I think that was a, a useful reminder that um, I, I, I wasn't as great as I, as I thought I was, and that the invitation was one that had gone to dozens of people. Um, many others of whom had managed to get a chance to speak. I also appeared, there was a, a very short-lived TV channel in uh, the UK, which was known mainly for Britain's bounciest weather, uh, featuring a man who'd been an Oompa Loompa in the original Willy Wonka film, doing a weather forecast while he was bouncing on a trampoline. So um, such was my inability to say no to media uh, opportunities that I, I appeared on that channel, not on a, a trampoline and not, not forecasting the weather. Um, but I've done uh, media work, I've done other things on the television. One of my trials is on uh, YouTube, the retrial of Nat, Nat Fraser. Um, I've given evidence at the Scottish Parliament and done other things in, e e even in, in some other uh, countries. And so, especially as a lawyer, good communication has been at the heart of my career and I think the longer I've done it and some of the review work that's been mentioned has shown that that's a, a, a hugely important uh, part of really any job, especially perhaps as a lawyer. I did a review into the impact of the minor strike on communities in Scotland, of the policing of the minor strike, and we went out into the, the communities then. So we went to miners' welfare clubs or even pubs in some places and heard some really harrowing stories from some of the, the men and women who'd lived through the minor strike and had been awfully affected by it. So um, listening is a huge part of good communication as well as, as talking. But that, that all sat as a nice adjunct to my, my main career. It led me to meeting, for example, uh, Jerry Conlon, who uh, inspired the, the film In the Name of the Father. It was one of the, the Guildford Four. Paddy Hill, one of the Birmingham Six, um, he's the wee angry man that, uh, when they came out after their, uh, their final appeal was successful, came out with his hand clenched and said, those people in there don't know how to spell justice, never mind dispense it. Um, he now lives in Ayrshire and he set up the Miscarriages of Justice organisation. And I think for someone like me, who's been doing the job a long time, it's important from time to time to meet someone like Paddy and remember that there are actually people that go through our system who aren't guilty, but find themselves in a position where no one listens to them, no one believes them, and they end up being wrongly convicted. Um, but that's as much as I want to say uh, about me. And really, as Mrs. Watson said, um, I, I 
m might or might not have been sitting where you're sitting. I don't know that the, my achievements when I was at Holyrood matched your achievements. I like to think I would have been, but I, I'm, I'm now a QC. Um, it doesn't seem anything special to me. It certainly doesn't seem anything special to my, my two kids. They're very unimpressed. I try to explain to them what it is. Not, not having it at all. So blah, blah, blah is what they, they think my job is. Claire Mitchell, uh, another QC in Scotland, one of the leading appeal lawyers. She's another former pupil from, from Holyrood as well. So, uh, and that's just the law. It's a, it's a smallish world, but two of the, the, the country's um, QCs are, are from here as well. So wherever you think I've been, you can go there too. So having been asked to speak to you uh, today, I, I will pay particular attention. I, I, I follow on Twitter and I follow the Debating Society on Twitter. I'll pay particular attention to the progress and the achievements of the various classes of 2021. And just finally then, um, can I suggest that you work hard and be lucky. Um, and after that, I hope that you enjoy whatever it is you, you decide to do as much as I continue to enjoy what I do. Um, so uh, congratulations and good luck. Thank you, John. Once again, could I ask everyone to join me in thanking John for giving up his valuable time and for such a wonderful speech this afternoon. Mr Quinn will now announce the award winners and Mr Scott will present the awards. Okay, thank you very much and thank you John, that was very thought provoking. I might get Claire's number off you for next, uh, next year. Uh, this is the third and final award ceremony and today we're going to celebrate the success in a number of areas. We have a wee bit of unfinished business from this morning uh, in terms of a special award, uh, uh, yeah, a Holyrood award. Then we have the special awards, as Mrs Watson had mentioned. Then we have the academic awards. We have those young people who achieved uh, seven A's at National Five, which is a considerable feat. And then those young people who achieved five A's at higher in one sitting. And then to finish off, we have the Ducks. Now, my trusty assistant has been working with me all day, and I don't know where I would be without Adelaide. Uh, she is going to come up in a wee minute and she's going to hand out the awards. She'll hand them to John and then John will pass them on to you guys. Remember to be looking your best here and I want to see lots of teeth and smile. Well, we'll not see your teeth because, but we know you're smiling because we can see your eyes smiling. Let's see those smiling eyes. Okay, it's going to be a wee bit tricky with these salvas. So I suggest what we do since we haven't really had time to practice this. Adelaide, if I can ask you to just, when this, we get to the salvas, just to check the name, fold it over and hand the salva over. And if you get the wrong salva, if you get back to your seat and find you've got the wrong salva, don't panic. It's never happened before in Holyrood history, but don't panic. We can sort it all at the end and it will be all right on the night. Okay. So we're going to start from my far left-hand side here, work our way this way, and then when we go on to the five hires, we're going to be over here. So we'll slightly readjust, okay, and then we'll finish off with the Ducks Awards. Okay, Adelaide, my trusty assistant, can you take to the floor, please? And John, can I ask you to join her? Okay, so the first awards today are the special awards. And these are given in a number of areas, some from subjects and some from whole school endeavours, where it is felt that the young person has gone over and above normal expectation and has excelled in such a way, I'll just take this off, as to greatly benefit the school community. Okay, is uh, Yasmin Adekiri here? Uh, Yasmin, come on down, please. Come on down. Yasmin. <laughs> Yasmin is receiving the Pink Holyrood Award for Advanced Higher French. Let's hear it again for Yasmin. Well done, Yasmin. <laughs> David's very good at the editing, aren't you, David? So, 
On to the special awards. This year's Art Award goes to a young lady who has been consistently a consistently high performer in this subject throughout this, her school journey. An example to others due to her attitude and determination to succeed, she deservedly gained A's at National 5 Art and Design and at Advanced Higher Art. She is a true artistic talent and all the art department felt it was time her talent and hard work were recognised. If you are here, and I hope you are, Eve Sanders, can you come down? Eve is not here, but will recognise her success. Well done, Eve. Okay. Eve can see that on the video. The Angela Coyle Award in Art. This award is named in honour of a former pupil of Holyrood, Angela Coyle. Angela embodied all of the qualities we hope for in a Holyrood pupil, diligence, integrity, ambition, and above all, kindness and good humour. As a pupil, Angela shone in art and design. Her popularity with staff and peers alike during her time at Holyrood is what we remember her mostly for. She had a lasting effect upon all of us who knew her, for which we are grateful. It is with great pleasure that we have named this award in her honour. May she rest in peace. The recipient of this year's award is a wonderful young woman who also embodies all the qualities of a Holyrood pupil. She left us in May, having achieved an amazing A at Advanced Higher Art and Design. This young person has been an outstanding artistic talent since S1 and has earned the affection and admiration of all of her teachers, not just in the art department. The winner of this year's Angela Coyle Memorial Award is Catherine Murphy. I'm going to announce this award. I know I believe that David is not here, but this award is the Barry Arshad Award. This award is in memory of Barry, who was a young person of Holyrood who passed away tragically three years ago. He would have been in the same year group as last year's sixth year, and each year the head teacher selects someone who has contributed a great deal to the school ethos and community. The young person who, would, who will receive this award is reliable, loyal, and has a good sense of humour and represents the voice of the young people in Holyrood very, very well. And it would go to David Hurrell. Let's hear it for David. We're going to move on to the Head Boy and Head Girl Awards. And our Head Boy and Head Girl, Reza and Cara, led us through a very, very difficult time. The sixth year was by no means uh, routine. It was the toughest year ever in our school life. Reza has already collected his award this morning, and I believe Cara is here. Cara, come on down. Well done, Cara. I'm just check, can I just check that uh, Anise is here, yes? That's okay. It's okay. Uh, thank you. Told you I couldn't do without her. Uh, okay, so the Music Award, the Michael Nelson 40 Award. In another life, long before Hollywood, I actually knew Michael Nelson. Michael was a young music teacher and he was a great guy. He was full of life, he had a young family and it was tragically taken from us. Uh, so this award is in his memory, and it's been awarded this year to someone who displayed hard work, determination, a real commitment to all aspects of his learning journey in music and beyond. Anis Arulfas. The next award is the Music Award for Understanding Music Appreciation. This award goes to a young person who has become known to us as one of our most gifted and talented musicians. She is really far from the music department and contributes so much to the work that goes on there. Kiva Gibb.
The next award is the Music Service to Instrumental Group Award. I'm not sure. Is Cameron here? Cameron's here. Thank you. Give the name away there. It goes to a young person who is extremely committed to all of the extracurricular groups. He works hard in all aspects of his extracurricular life of the department. He is a fantastic role model for the younger people of Holyrood. Well done, Cameron Todd. The next award, we're moving on to the Outstanding Contribution to Ethos Awards. Now, the next person was here earlier and collect, collected their award, but I'll read out what her teachers had to say about her. Brooke regularly gave of her time to support students across the school. She was a sports ambassador throughout her time in Holyrood. Through her selfless approach in supporting both the PE department and the active schools team, her service to our community was a perfect example of an outstanding contribution to school ethos. Let's hear it for Brooke Watson. Okay. The next award is to Devon McCall for outstanding contribution. Devon with us? Yep, thank you, Devon. Devon's willingness to encourage and protect students who were struggling showing kindness and compassion to others, particularly in music and in sport, gave him an excellent, made him an excellent example of an outstanding pupil of Holyrood. Well done, Devon. Thank you. The next award, again, for outstanding contribution to school ethos, goes to a deputy head girl, and what's said about this young lady? She's an all-round top girl. She was a Rudy Queen, second only to Mrs. Watson, Katie Howe. <laughs> no, no Katie. Okay. And another outstanding contribution to school ethos, Peter Miller. Peter has been a go-to since day one, and that's coming from the head teacher. High praise indeed. So let's hear it for Peter. Whoops. An outstanding contribution to school ethos. The next one will go to a young person who's a trailblazer for substance sustainability and pupil voice within Holyrood. Sophie Reid. The next one goes to a young man who's not here, but he was here this morning, but he had to go to college, and he, he asked me, he pleaded with me, to read out what we had to say about him. It goes to a young man who showed an absolute commitment and support to all of our young people in the hub during lockdown. He was here every day, he was helping out, he was a joy to have in the school. Even if we did have to put up with William's regular football updates from the Govan area of the city, it was a pleasure to have him in here. So that would be for William Campbell. Let's hear it for William. This award is quite a unique award, and in all my time in education, which is more than 30 years, I don't think I've ever come across this award. It's for 13 years perfect attendance. We must be doing something right. Eh, Pierce? Where is it? Pierce, cat? Down you come, Pierce. Well done. Let's hear it for you. How are we doing? Are we okay over there? Good. Okay, the next award is the Robert Hamilton Award. You might have heard of DYW, Developing the Young Workforce. It's become a big thing in education in recent years. We think Robert developed it. We think it was his idea. The Robert Hamilton Award is in memory of Robert, who was an excellent servant to Holyrood. Robert built up very strong relationships with a variety of organizations and agencies and with our young people to ensure high quality destinations beyond school, into the world of FE and work, and as we said earlier, beyond. Robert 
was ahead of its time and he ensured that Holyrood was meeting the needs of all of its young people, not just in an academic sense. In Essex, this young person combined his studies in Holyrood with a day release programme. This was run jointly by Aloha Athletic Football Club and North Lanarkshire College. This allowed this young man to gain a qualification in sports coaching and develop his footballing skills. It led to him being taken on as a professional by Aloha and making his first team deb debut in the Scottish, Cup League, Scottish League Cup against Brecon City in July. Did you win? <laughs> Devin McCall. Down you come, Devin. <laughs> the next award is a sports award, and it goes to a young person who graduated from the SFA Performance Academy in S4. He arrived at Holyrood in S1, travelling all of the way from Clyde Bank on a daily basis and playing football for St Mirren Football Club. A tremendous commitment. He then moved on to Partick Thistle, where he recently made his first team debut. He showed excellent leadership skills throughout the year, both, both within the P department and in the SFA Academy. He went on to achieve his higher PE and sports leadership award and was seen regularly helping out the younger SFA Academy members during his lunch periods. His attitude and personality throughout his holiday journey was exemplary and this is the reason he is receiving this award. Ben Stanway. We've mentioned Brooke before. Brooke was here earlier, but I'm going to read out what was said about Brooke. This award is for the Sports Leaders Award. She collected it earlier. Brooke was more than committed to Sports Leader Programme through school, going over and above in everything she was asked to do to complete in, uh, the course. It all started when she committed to coaching the Coaching Academy two years running during the October week holidays with active schools where she completed both level four and level five qualifications. So when it came to completing the higher, level six, she put the same time and effort into this as the previous two qualifications, showing great leadership qualities, commitment, as well as using her free periods to go to the primaries and deliver sports sessions to them. This award goes to Brooke Watson. Well done, Brooke. Okay. Okay, that leads me on to the next set of awards. The next set of awards are the academic awards. The first of these is for achieving seven A's at National Five. This is an outstanding achievement, an outstanding achievement, and is, is not to be taken lightly. Okay, so these young people also deserve a very, very big round of applause. Okay, it's going to be a wee bit tricky here, but we'll see how you're getting on with this, Adelaide. Okay, so seven A's and National Five, Amanjo Singh. <laughs> Avine Mullen. <laughs> Azra Hassani. Corey Stewart. <laughs> Finn Gallagher. <laughs> Hassan Said. <laughs> Hawa Laka. Jonathan Miller. <laughs> Kiva Gibb. <laughs> Leah Wrigley. <laughs> Leo Mackay. Leo Reed, <laughs> Ruth 
Lewis Caulfield. Here, thank Lewis here. Thank you. Marta Blaze. Maya Howard. Michael Toland. Munib Malik. Shubi Kibanda. Sophie Cullen. Suban Rana. Uzma Shazadi is not here, but let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> Zoe Craig. <laughs> Zoha Rashid. <laughs> What's that? Which, which one? <laughs> Sorry? Neve Farms. Is it on? No. No. Neve Farms. Ah. Apologies, I missed out an award. I'd, I missed out one because some person wasn't here, but I've missed out Neve Farms. Thank you. Thank you, Adelaide. Neve Farms, down you come. Apologies, I'm going to read this out, sorry. Neve represented the school during the third year playing Juliet in Romeo and Juliet for her entry to the Shakespeare for Schools Festival. During her advanced higher studies, she was an exemplary student in both written and practical elements of the course. She showed generosity of spirit by helping others and always being prepared and willing to learn. She is naturally gifted as an actor Paired with an excellent work ethic and intelligence. Well done, Neve, and please accept my apologies. Thank you. Moving on to the five A's at higher. So we're going to relocate over here, John and Adelaide. Again, most of the young people are here, some are not, but we'll read out their names. Five A's at higher, Abby Spears. Anne Hannah. Anna Coyle. Anzela Tarek, who's not here. Katrina Henry. Ellie Dunleavy. Iman Amir. Hafsa Javed. Hannah Cunningham. <laughs> Mariam Shazad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nuala McGuinness. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Nuala. Olivia Brannan. <laughs> Ra 
wrist player. Ronan Peacock. Rosie Eastwood, who can't be here. Taiba Noor. And that brings us to the end of the five fires. Are we okay there, Adelaide? Yeah. Excellent, thank you. Um, and we move on to the Ducks. The Ducks goes to those young people who have achieved the highest academic success in S5, in their SQA hires. Five hires at A, top hires. Very, very difficult. This is no mean feat. And while the Ducks is a singular term, it is marvellous that we have four young people here in Holyrood who have achieved so highly. Five A's, band one. Let's just think about that. That is quite amazing. The first of our Ducks winners is not here, but we will read her name out. Anzela Tari. <laughs> Katrina Henry. <laughs> Iman Amir. And our excellent host for today, Mariam Shazad. Thank you, John. Thank you, Adelaide. Mariam would now like to present a small gift to John and Donnie McLeod as a token of our appreciation for speaking in this afternoon. Thanks again to our guest speaker, Mr. John Scott QC. We would like to offer a vote of thanks to some of the many people who helped in preparing and organising the Senior Phase Awards. Thanks to Mrs. McCoy and Mr. M Mr. Graham and the Caritas team for support in setting up and supervising. Thanks to our technician, Mr. David Cargo, for providing sound and filming this event. <laughs> the films of the award ceremonies will be posted on the Holyrood YouTube channel very soon. Thanks to our cleaners and janitorial staff for all the great work that they do. <laughs> Thanks to the art department, especially Ms. Reese, for creating the balloon arch and Mr. Burrow for photography. Thanks to the young people of Holyrood and especially the former pupils who have taken the time to come here today. Thanks to the catering staff for providing cakes, biscuits and light refreshments. Thanks to the music department and especially our performer today, Dermot. And thanks to my co-host, Sime. Thanks to my co-host, Mariam. After the ceremony, award winners should remain in the auditory to have their photo taken under the balloon arch. After that, we would like to invite you all to join us for some light refreshments in the small gym after the ceremony. Dermot McGregor will play Adelita to close the ceremony.